everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and it's time for the April <laughs> Scrawler box. I don't know what keeps happening to these boxes. I know I live in a rural area but it's really not that far from the distribution centre. It's been in the wars. So this is the monthly art subscription box from here in the UK where we get a set of curated supplies along with a prompt and a magazine and the idea is it gets our creative juices flowing and we can create an artwork that fits the prompt. So first things, woo, first things first, here is our featured artist. Oh, oh PD. And this is Candice Fincher. And uh, she paints a lot of insects, apparently. Lots and lots of social media links down here. If you like what you see, you can go and follow her and peruse some more of her work. That's really pretty. I like that a lot. We also have, <laughs> okay, clearly scroller, scroller box and frisk are in bed together. Um, 300 GSM watercolour paper. I'm not mad about that, by the way. F A5, and this paper is made in Britain. It has texture to it. Um, it's not ridiculously textured, kind of standard watercolour paper. What I would say is nothing special, but good quality and um, good value as well. The Frisk paper seems to stand up quite well to most things. But if you remember in the last scroller box, we had a not good combination of the Frisk paper and the Statler fine liner. And it was neither the fault of the paper or the fine liner, it was just the two of them didn't mesh well together. So let's hope we don't have this problem again this month. So quite happy with that. There is 10 sheets here, so plenty to go at. Here is our scroller zine, so that tells us uh, a little bit about the supplies and also gets uh, gives us our interview with the featured artist, etc. So we'll look at that last because we don't want to spoil the surprise. Here's our sticker. Look, it's so pretty. It's a pretty. So this is a little uh, a little scaled down version of our butterfly here. These colours are lovely. I like these colours. Oh. Fresh. Masking fluid fine liner and it's got latex in it. Guess who's got latex sensitivity? Me. I will replace this with my own masking fluid that I know is safe for me to be near. Uh, what I want to do though is uh, show you the applicator and a few other things. This masking fluid, I don't know if you can see it, it's obviously got a slight tint of blue to it. It makes it so much easier to see where it is on the paper when it's coloured like this. I really, really like that. And the one that I use has the same thing. So I'm assuming this has got a long pointy. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's like, can you see that? It's hollow there. That is that is like super accuracy. I don't really fancy trying to get that back in there, especially if I've had a Jack Daniels. <laughs> That tiny bit there, can you even see that? Oh, that's got to fit back in here. That's just, oh my. It's all a bit, yeah, see, that's not the easiest thing. I'm sober, by the way. <laughs> right, okay, so that is, you can really is pinpoint accuracy. Okay, so here is the alternative I'm going to use. It is the Schmincke masking fluid. Same thing, you can see it's blue, so you can see where it's going in the paper. It's even bluer than the Frisk one. But if I take the top off this here, um, I peel off the... <laughs> Um, you can see that's got a very fine applicator on it as well and um, that's gonna ha it's probably not quite as fine as this but I wonder if that would screw on there <gasps> oh <laughs> it actually screws on there that's hilarious okay even better so I can fully participate that's crazy I can fully participate in the masking fluid a la everyone else with the scroller box by doing this. Okay, so this is gonna go into the stash shop, but that's fine. I'm really glad we've got a replacement, that's good. Th these are these are great as well, This because it's minimal mess. I absolutely hate masking fluid with the passion. With the fire of a thousand suns, so that's really good. Oh, here is our sweet, um, oh, this looks like a lime. I really wish it was a chocolate lime, because I quite like them. But uh, we're not worried about that too much. We have a paintbrush, a Pro Art Polar White Nylon Number no. 4 Round. These are very similar to the sea white synthetic brushes I sell in the stash shop for much cheapness. Um, I'll be interested to compare the retail value of this compared to the ones I sell myself. <laughs> I like the Pro Art brushes. I've got several Pro Art brushes, so I'm hoping that this one is going to be a good one. And I'm pretty sure we've had one of these nylon brushes before, perhaps just in a different size. So look forward to that. The other thing I would like to say as well is that not all synthetic brushes are made equal and some behave better with watercolour than others. I do find there are some synthetic brushes that are better suited to just using acrylic, but some seem to have the absorbency required to make a good watercolour brush as well. What's in here? 
the oh, we've had these before as well these are amazing these are massive chunky versions of the faber castell watercolor pencils they're exactly the same they're just huge so these are the albrecht durer uh, magnus pencils they're called I like these because they are just jumbo versions. They're exactly the same colours. Their colour matching is because it's the same stuff. They just made bigger ones. The colour names are all the same. So if you're familiar with Polychromos pencils or the normal Albrecht Durer watercolour pencils, that's what these are. So we've got quite a nice selection of colours here. And we can now see where the featured artists got their orange from. Warm Grey 5 is quite a dark colour as well. I don't think it's this dark, but... Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is good. Uh, this is good. What I will say is I am not a user of watercolour pencils. I know everyone's different and there'll always be someone in the comments saying, but this, but that. I just don't use them. These are spectacular quality though and they're incredibly good fun. So I am looking forward to that much, much, much. Okay, so let's see what else we can learn about these supplies. The Magnus Watercolour Pencils Time 5. This is actually a really nice little tin as well. Oh, okay. oh, oh. Ah, that's quality. Faber-Castell quality. The Magnus Watercolour Pencils are high quality watercolours. Great for providing versatility of expression when drawing, shading and painting. That's one thing I do really like about the watercolour version. They behave as a normal pencil very well indeed. They feature acid free and light fast pigment in a 5.3mm, you thick, fully water soluble lead. They are easily activated, yes they are, they're, they, like, you just sort of look in their direction and they start to di they start to dilute. They are easily activated to be transformed for a soft vibrant colour laid, vibrant colour lay down with only a few fine or broad brush strokes to reveal the full and unique power of the colours. Depending on the paper being used, the pigments can be completely dissolved and will then behave in the same way as classic watercolour paints. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. The masking fluid fine liner. They have a, an allergy warning everywhere. Thank you for that scroller box. I personally appreciate that very much. F but it is like literally right on the front of the bottle that like you can't miss it. Gets on latex. That's cool. It comes with an easy to use applicator for accurately masking out areas that are required to be left blank. Once dry, you can carefully peel or rub off with your fingertips or an eraser. I find that using an eraser works best for me. And the area underneath will be left blank. The metal nib applicator has a fine 0.5mm pinpoint. That's like, that's like, it is literally fine liner territory. Finest precision, sharpest lines, making it perfect for adding in delicate details to your work. The Pro Art Round Brush. Perfect for use with all forms of water-based mediums. This round style paint brush offers you sound performance you'd expect from one of the world leading of the world leaders in brush making, this durable brush is great for soft and clean paint applications. The nylon fibres have good colour carrying capacity whilst maintaining their shape well. That's why I like synthetic brushes. The recommended retail price of these is £3.15. Here is a sea white number four round. <sighs> Let me just pop this out away. And I think that this is actually smaller than... Oh no, it's not. The sea white is the black handle and the pro art is the white handle. The the sea white brush has a much smaller barrel on it. Um, it's much slimmer. The points of these brushes are almost identical. So recommended retail price. Obviously, that's not what you're going to pay for one of these because they always tell you a really hefty price. Um, but the, the recommended retail price on this card is £3.15. I sell these in the stash shop for £1. So that's 88 cents if you are in euros and uh, a, a dollar and a bit if you are in US dollars. And I use these all the time. I use these brushes and they, sta they, they do stand up to the test of time pretty well. So if you're in the market for some, maybe um, you just want to build up a, your collection you know, this, uh, with all the different sizes, please head to the stash shop and check these out. These brushes are really popular. I sell a lot of them. And I've got um, some uh, of the flat variety as well, not just the round ones. So you can check that out the website here. The live link that will take you straight there is down in the description. Anyway, I have high hopes for this Pro Art brush. I wouldn't pay £3.15 for one though. And here we are with Frisk watercolour paper. And this is cold pressed, so it's textured. This lovely Frisk pad comes with 10 sheets of cold press, acid-free, recyclable and biodegradable textured watercolour sheets. Keeps colours clean and bright and is perfect for all kinds of watercolour washes and blends. Ideal for use with all water activated mediums. £5.49, see for good watercolour paper, that is an absolute bargain. However, 
Is it high quality watercolour paper? I have no doubt about that. Is Gem Gem going to like it? That's another matter entirely. That is a really nice set of supplies. I have to say that all of our subscription boxes are, are doing us well just now. There was a period there where there were some really dodgy combinations of supplies. But I have to say that um, both Upcrate and Scroller Box seem to have upped their game a bit again. And this is lovely. Um, this is really, really nice. It would have been nice if Scroller Box could have supplied some non-latex masking fluid. I appreciate they don't have to cater to everyone though and I understand that entirely and they've obviously got a contract with Frisk and that's part of the agreement. Uh, I'm just really glad that I can switch this out and still use this 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 nozzle. This is really good. I'm just having a little think about this. I think I'm going to test the Frisk masking fluid when I do the swatching so that you can see what it's like and just demonstrate it and I'll put some gloves on and then after that I can put it straight into the stash shop. I shouldn't have to touch it other than to take it off the paper, which I can do with gloves instead of a rubber. I would need to clean this nozzle out as well though. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll, I'll do it in the swatch now. I just need to keep myself sensible. <laughs> right, okay. Oh, this is too much thinking. Let's have a look at the scholar zine and see what else we can see in here. Okay, the sweet treat is a chocolate lime. Yes, I'm all up for the chocolate. Oh, these are so good, I'm having this right now. I never get excited about the sweet on account of not having a sweet tooth, but I love a chocolate lime. I've decided as well I'm going to get Mr. Gem to clean this out for me so that I don't do anything ridiculous. It's easier than messing about with gloves. So here's an overview of your products. And here is the interview with the featured artist. Some of her work's lovely. And here is the page of scroller tips, activating the pigments. They're talking about pencils, a bit of blending, that sort of thing. And they're talking about the masking fluid here. Guys, there is no chocolate in my lime. There is literally no chocolate in my lime. I've just bitten that in half. Bitterly, bitterly disappointed. Man, I'm really excited about that as well. Okay, so we've got some good tips and tricks there as well. And we've got some artist's advice. Oh, ho, 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 now, 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 here's something very interesting. Me thinks the scholar box have been listening in. Underneath this beautiful artwork, there is a little paragraph with three stars beside it. <clears throat> The artist has used different colours and materials to create this featured artwork, although we try to collaborate with the artist to use the supplies in the box. Sometimes it is either not possible or we just want to include one of their stunning artworks as a print. The prints are a tool of inspiration rather than what you can create with this box. Use it as a starting point, a theme to work from, an inspiration for your own creative journey. Interesting, isn't it? That's good. I'm really glad they've put that in there. That's, that's really, really pleased me. Really pleased me. Okay, uh, let's see what there's a little bit here about the masking fluid. Look, it's so, so accurate. Okay, uh, it's saying here, this is tips from the artist, that they've ruined lots of paintbrushes applying masking fluid. I like to use the uh, the silicon tipped paintbrushes. They're actually, well, they were originally used for nail art. So it's, it's like a solid block of silicon. They're great for spreading them about. I think the ones that I had in the stash shop have all been sold. Um, but if you, they're relatively cheap to get a hold of, but they tend to come in quite big packs. I would highly recommend that for moving about your masking fluid if you want to do so. So instead of messing about with paintbrushes, because even if you like, even if you clean your paintbrush really, really thoroughly, you don't always get it all out and you're like, eh, you end up throwing the paintbrush out anyway. So it's quite wasteful. OK, and um, there's a little QR code uh, for a technique. Love that as well. That's great. OK, Organic Origins. Yay. I love this one. This is where my, uh, my owl came from. <laughs> Had lots of fun with this. Loved the colours. Loved. I just love, love, loved all of it. I love that we've got a dinosaur. Love that we've got a dinosaur. That's amazing. That one and this one are my absolute favourites because this one's got trees and we all know that Gem Gem likes trees. Great stuff. Absolutely love it. Okay. The scholar top three. Oh, this is cute. The layers, the colours. <laughs> this one's really cute as well. Oh, wow. Okay. I like this one the best. Sorry. Okay, let's move on. Scroller extra bugs are not going to inherit the earth. They own it now, so we might as well make might as well make peace with the landlord. So they're talking about inks and dyes here. So that's a little bit of art history for you there. And they have their YouTube live, and that is the twenty fifth of May at six pm UK time to talk about the box. I kind of forgot about the last one. Dang it! I might need to put that in my diary. So that is our scroller zine. All oh, right, lovely jubbly. And uh, but just before we jump into actually doing stuff with the supplies, let's find out. Oh, 
Let's find out what our prompt is. One, two, three. Metamorphosis. Oh, good one. This month it's time for a change. Inspired by our featured artist's love for all things creepy and crawly, we encourage you to experiment with the versatility this transformative medium has to offer. Sketch, hatch, dot, colour, layer, blend or paint. Just add water to watch your creations transform before your eyes. I'm just going to kind of rearrange things a wee bit here and uh, we'll get down to some swatching. Alrighty. For the purposes of safety here, um, I'm going to put gloves on from the get-go and I am not going to take them off until we have finished the swatch process. I'm not going to die or anything, but the reaction I get to it is quite unpleasant and I'd rather not have to deal with that on a Tuesday afternoon. Uh, yeah, I want to get the masking fluid down first to give it time to dry. Do you know, it's funny, even though I've got gloves on, I'm kind of like, oh, don't touch it. <laughs> This is what I'm saying, like, see these little crumbs and stuff? I'm going to have to, like, decontaminate the area. Okay, so that screws on there like so. I make this look as if I'm, like, performing precision <laughs> surgery or something. Um, I'm just trying to keep myself safe, guys. I actually really like how pinpoint, literally, I mean, in the literal sense this is. Oh, right, okay. Uh, we don't have to do much squeezing, though. Um, I would like to flatten this out, and I'm able to do that. So uh, the, you can see there the blue colour's grey and I, I don't understand why all masking fluids don't adopt this this position. I'm going to leave some areas a bit thicker than others I'm like that there just to see how it's going to dry. You really don't have to squeeze at all. I'm not, I'm not squeezing, that's literally just like running out the end of that. So let's do a couple of uh, squiggly bits because Mole's a fan of squiggly bits. And some really light masking fluid there as well. Okay, so we're going to leave that to dry completely. I'm going to put the, the lid back on this. Mr. Gem has volunteered to rinse out this needle tip for me um, while it's still wet. So I'm literally going to go and give this through to him because he's here just now, right now, so that he can clean it out. So that when I'm doing the scroller challenge, I can use it with my schminke. And I have no fear of fear of retribution. Oh, it's really, it, this is really clean. I like this a lot. This is such a nice way to use masking fluid. Um, obviously, once you've put that applicated on, you wouldn't be unscrewing this again. Um, so you wouldn't have the sort of bits that I've got here. It's a really nice way because masking fluid gets really messy really quickly. Right, I'm just going to go and deliver this to Mr. Gem. I'll be right back. Alrighty, oh, it's just, it just went and cleaned it out and then handed it back to me wet. <laughs> it's like, could you not dry it off? So now I feel like I've got wet gloves. Um, even though they're like, oh, my fingers feel wet, even though they're not. It's weird. I will be putting this, as I mentioned earlier, in the stash shop. I've decided as well, after I've done the scroller challenge, I'm going to put the pencils in as well, because they're really not something I would use. And I have the full set of Albrecht Durers anyway, so. So I'm going to have to wait till that dries before I can use anything over the top of it. But in the meantime, I do want to swatch these out really quickly uh, before we start our scroller challenge. They're so nice, these pencils are so chunky though. Super. These actually suit my hand a little bit better for long-term use, uh, you know, because the, the smaller the barrel is for me, the finer the motor function you have to use. And uh, if you're using them for a duration, then it starts to get uncomfortable. We've got Warm Grey 5. This is essentially going to be our contrast. And you will see why in just a moment. As a pencil, these are great for layering up. Like, they behave really well if you're talking about, you know, normal pencils. And you can layer them up just like you would a polychromos. They're, they're excellent. I highly recommend them. If you're looking for that versatility of having a water-soluble pencil, these are absolutely great in jumbo form or not so jumbo form, both dark phthalo green. So this is like a, you know, obviously it's a gem colour. It's like an emerald colour. So in doing this as well, you notice the texture of the paper coming through as well. So the watercolour paper is substantially textured. And we've got, uh, uh, I said aquamarine there, light ultramarine. Now, the nice thing about these as well is when we activate them with water, we can layer them up, which I'll demonstrate more of when we get to the scroller challenge in just a minute. But I just wanted you to see the colours here and see how they feel against the paper. They do feel quite, you know, like the paper feels quite abrasive. The paper is quite textured. Um, and that's characteristic of this type of, um, you know, mass-produced watercolour paper. I would be a bit disappointed if it wasn't really knobbly-bobbly, truthfully. And then here comes the magic part. I've just got a little bit of water here. So I've got clean water, and I've also got my little pot with my paint puck. I'm using my green paint puck today, which is the one I normally keep for my acrylic paint, but it's because my pink one's in the wash. <laughs> I've cleaned off the, the transit gum on this brush as well. It stands out really well nice next to my blue glove. I just want to show you the solubility of these pencils as well. So we'll do half. Look at that melting away. Uh, you, there is literally, the texture is just disappearing. 
which is absolutely fabulous. Really solid, nice colour as well. You know, not not wishy-washy watercolour colour, if that makes sense. Really strong, vibrant pigment. Generous lay down from the pencils initially obviously helps with that. But let us just melt in a way. So you, you can keep as much or as little of your pencil texture as you like. If you just brush over it lightly with a, a wet paintbrush, you're going to be able to retain some of your mark making. But if you want it to look like a traditional watercolour paint, you can do a little bit more work with your brush there and it will just disappear. So really flexible. There we go. Look at that orange. This is dark cadmium orange. And here is our light yellow glaze. Now here's the other thing as well. If I come down to this masking fluid now, I can see parts that are dry, parts that are starting to dry. I think, yeah, the, the very thinnest application down in this corner here. You guys are going to be seasick by the time I'm finished this today. Uh, this application, the thin application here is dry. Um, I, I, would, I would risk it for a biscuit on the wiggly lines. And some of these blobs are drier than others. It has only been about f f 10 minutes. The the heavier applications, the dots that I've did, they've got little belly buttons in them now and it's obviously as it's dried, it's just started to sink in. Yeah, I don't think that's completely dry underneath there because I'm pushing that and it's bubbling. Oh, oh. It's funny. Okay, so there's two ways obviously we can apply over the top here. We can put our pencil over, which to be honest, I would be really careful doing. Let's use a darker colour so that we can see. If you've got a very light application of the masking fluid, like our, uh, you know, like our lines here, you could go very gently over the top with your, your pencil if that's what you wanted. You could actually work around them. Um, and you would be okay, but any sort of pressure is going to cause you a problem there. Um, but if you're wanting to mix your colours on the paper, obviously that's kind of the way you would be doing it. But every time you go over that with your pencil, it's going to try and pull up the masking fluid. Um, and it's already started to do it at that corner, so you have to be aware of that as well. The easiest way to do it is obviously to do it with your water brush. You can either grab your pencil, wet your brush, and take it straight off the tip of the pencil, which I do sometimes, and then go over the top of it. I want to try over these big blobules as well because I want to see if they're going to survive the onslaught. Some of the thicker paint there. Um, also, you, I've, I've accidentally shown you another technique as well there. See, I had a little splatter. If you take a really wet brush and you can actually... Um, I don't really know how to show this this way. If you put pressure, if you put pressure on the brush like this and you can use a flicking motion, you can use it as for a splatter effect. You've just got to make sure that you keep your brush nice and wet. You can get some really nice effects with that as well. So the other way that you can do it is to activate it the way we've just done, but put it into a palette. Coating your brush and actually you're almost pushing the pigment down off the core onto the onto the, the base of your palette, like onto the surface of your palette. But then that lets you work with it in there if that's what you want to do. And you can then dilute it a little bit more. And if you want to make it more concentrated, you can just go back to your pencil load up your brush and off you go and as you can see that will give us just as much paint and do just as good a job so let's go right over this here of not pressing hard but going over that a number of times to see how it copes there we go nice and clean nice and white once again okay so now here here's the thing and this is where a lot of the a lot of masking fluids let themselves down is the peeling or the removal of the the masking fluid so I'm going to start here. Uh, some people like to use an eraser. I have these gloves on, which is actually quite a good surface because they're slightly textured. But you can see there, I'm actually able to pull that up fairly easily. So, and this is where all masking fluids are not made equal. Good quality masking fluids will let you do this with relative ease without tearing up the paper. The other thing I've learned about masking fluid, uh, just from unboxing these things and obviously from you guys as well, the longer the masking fluid sits on the paper, the stronger it bonds to the paper. So the more likely you are to actually pull up the surface of the paper. So try and keep it there for the minimum amount of time you can. Don't like walk away and leave it for two days and go back to it kind of thing. Um, because it probably is gonna disturb the integrity of the paper underneath. And that's especially not good if you're wanting to paint on the bits that you've masked over. Uh, so you can see there, look, that's coming up beautifully and that is a really nice, crisp, tidy line. Like it's very definitive, it's very sharp. I am very, like how many times can I say very? I really like this, this nib in particular and I'm hoping it's going to work this well with my Schmincke 
masking fluid when it comes to our artwork. So there's the one with the pencil. So you can see there, it's still done its job, obviously. I've just had to be a little bit more careful. So it can be done. You just have to go easy with it. Our very thinnest of applications has still given us enough coverage because we have lovely white lines underneath there. Again, absolutely no issues, which is fabulous. So this Frisk Masking Fluid, definitely one of the better masking fluids that I've tried. Uh, the, the smell from it isn't absolutely, I mean, it still stinks because all of them do, but it doesn't like smack you in the face when you unscrew the lid. So I would say, very cautiously, very cautiously, despite being made of latex, uh, because obviously Gem Gem doesn't like that, as a product, so far, so very good. Okay, here's the really thick masking fluid, and that's just come off like a bit of chewing gum. Excellent. So you can put much thicker layers down, and with just a little bit of drying time, that wasn't long, really. Maybe 15, 20 minutes tops. And it's coming away beautifully, like it really is. I would like to hear your opinions on this. For those of you that have used both types, do you find that the latex ones perform better? Obviously, that's not something I can comment on personally. But there we go. Paper's great. Nice, crisp lines. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, I'm going to decontaminate the entire area now and let's get to this scroller challenge and see what we can do. Righty ho ho, I have cleaned absolutely everything. Uh, I've wiped down all my pencils, my paintbrush, everything. I am 100% confident that everything is safe. Fresh, like, cleaned the cup, put fresh water back in the cup, the full shooting match. Uh, wiped down the tin, you name it, I've done it. I've also put the nib on the Schmincke masking fluid and I did a little test there. You do have to squeeze a little bit harder, like you actually physically have to squeeze, but apart from that, it's working fine. So I'm really pleased that I can that I can do this without having to take the precautions that I just did. I really wanted to show you the Frisk fluid, so, you know, we're good. Anywho, I've been pondering this as we go along, and I'm, there, I kinda have to do this because it makes sense. The Scrawler Challenge is, of course, metamorphosis. As a, as a bioscience student, a person of science, and also having a biology degree, one of the things we used to have to do was draw scientific diagrams of animally and plant things uh, when we were studying for our degree. That includes wildlife, not just cows. I would really like to do, and this is going to be so cliche, but I would really like to do the butterfly metamorphosis cycle but not necessarily in a scientific diagram format, but I feel that is fitting. But make it more sort of illustrative rather than diagrammatic. Is that even a word? <laughs> Gonna have like a, maybe a little leaf or two here. I think we'll maybe have our caterpillar stage. And normally when we draw these as well, they're like, um, there's two sort of stages, like the chrysalis is very green for the first part and then it goes white obviously as the butterfly's ready to come out. So I think we'll maybe use some masking fluid in that and make it mostly white with just a bit like a hint of green. Oh, okay, right, so what I'm going to do first is I am going to mask off some of the areas where... That one was a bubble. And then this chrysalis area as well. So this is going to take a bit more work, but that's okay. I am trying to keep the masking fluid layer as thin as possible. I'm going to make this line right round the outside here. And this is really good for this. Okay, now I'm going to take this nib off because I need to fill this area in. If I was using the Frisk fluid at this point, I would have unscrewed the nozzle and be using one of the little silicone brushes I was talking about earlier. See, I even, ha I even know what I would be doing if I was using different masking fluid. And there we go. Okay, jobs are good. Un. I think I want to start with my tree trunk. I want to see, first of all, um, I'm going to mute down the orange with the warm grey to get a, a sort of tree bark type colour. A little bit of green in there too. Okay, so I'll just build up some layers here. And I'm deliberately waiting until... The first part that I've put down is dried to give me a slightly streaky effect. And that's just to help with uh, showing off some sort of texture on these stem parts here. So almost a tree, but maybe not quite. And in the more delicate areas, obviously. Okay, we we'll add in a little bit more grey now. Okay, I'm going to leave that to dry and then I'm going to go in with the grey pencil and add in even more detail and get some shadows and things in there as well. While that's drying, I'm going to start working on some leaves here. 
You mix in some yellow on this top part just to add a little bit of interest there. Okay, this should be dry enough now. Yeah, just starting adding in a little bit of texture on my tree here. And that's the beauty of these pencils. As long as you've got a good sharp point on them, you can, um, you can add in plenty of detail. And you can also go back over. I just want to darken a little bit of that down. I just felt that was too sort of stark there. Just want to show you here uh, the thirsty brush technique. I picked up a little bit too much pigment there. Uh, you can lift this like normal watercolour using a clean damp brush. And if you feel it's too much, you can just dab away at it and it will take away the excess and you can correct your mistakes. Or in this case, just take a little bit. It's not a mistake, it's a happy accident. I'm feeling like this is going to look pretty bare. And I don't know whether I want to go for a, a blue background or a green, but I feel green would be more appropriate just to take away the sort of starkness of the corners of the paper. The paintbrush is big enough to deal with this and we can build it up. I've got faith in the paper as well. I don't know how I feel about this, honestly. Yeah, kind of give it like a foresty background feel. That I think that would make me a little bit happier. Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna ruminate on that. Um, you can see the level of detail that I've got, um, in these plants here. I'm like basically just working away and getting some depth and getting some layers. I'm not doing anything particularly exciting because I'm having to wait for each part to dry. That's basically, and I'm just gonna do that for the whole stem before I start tackling any of the. The butterfly parts. I don't know what to call it because it's not a tree trunk. It's just a really wonky sapling by the looks of things. Maybe it's been pulled over with the weight of the chrysalises. Get the idea of like a like a leafy canopy type job going on here. Like just to kind of frame it a little bit more. Because see again, I'm I'm thinking like um scientific diagrams. I've usually got a box around them or figure eight. Refer to figure eight on page sixteen of your textbook. <sighs> You're like, oh, again? Oh, some of those lines aren't wanting to shift. Yeah, they're not wanting to move now. That's interesting, isn't it? Hmm, well, that's uh, that's kind of a problem because I now look as if I've got a green curtain with a scallop on it. Yeah, that's that's just not, that's not wanting to move much at all. That's, that's very interesting. This may have ruined my, my, uh, my prospects here. Actually, everything else is lifting, but <laughs> that's so interesting. Okay, we're going to have to do a little bit of hatching, I think, once that's dry. So I've got, I haven't used my yellow or my orange, and those two colours, I think, are definitely going to be in the butterfly, considering I've used the other three for more or less the rest of the picture. I'm going to have my little caterpillar dude here. I don't think I'm going to wet him. I think I might keep him just in pencil. Another caterpillar dude on the go here. So our little, cat, little caterpillar buddy's making his way up the stem and then um, he decides he's going to get into his little bed so we'll work on that bit next. I'm going to have to sharpen up my grey because um, I'm using that obviously in place of a black but if I just zoom out a little bit now you can see there we've got the start of the story here. For those of you that are curious these big pencils do fit in most white hole sharpeners so I've got the little Derwent, I, I call this my bucket sharpener because it's got a bucket on it um, and that fits in the big hole so most of if you've got a twin hole sharpener most of the time this will fit in your your your, your bigger side so here i want the chrysalis to be because uh, it's only the bottom half of this part i want it to be quite green but i'm going to make it a really yellow green so i'm going to start with the yellow part here and then i'm going to put a tiny layer of this over the top so I'm just mixing this paint on the paper. And that's starting to dry. I'm just going to soften that edge. And then I can go in with the green and really work on these, these sections. Oh, there's our little dude now. I've not really decided what I'm doing pattern-wise here, but what I do know is that the body is going to be dark. So let's get that in first. This grey pencil has been the saviour of the scrawler challenge. Without it, I would have been stuffed if I was going to do something like this. So that's nice. <laughs> and I'm going to activate this just to give it a bit of body, pardon the expression. Ah. I actually haven't thought about design at all here, which is a bit mental, but that's okay. So I'm going in with the pencil and I'm actually going to colour around the masking fluid. Like, make that really bright. So I'm really testing the masking fluid out here because I am obviously using a lot of pencil, quite a lot of water. 
Okay, I'm just going to fill all this in now. So I'm going to take the, the pigment off the pencil and do it that way. The grey is actually quite nice because it's not too harsh. Oh, my orange wasn't dry. Shoot. Right, while I'm waiting for all that to dry, I really didn't have to cover up my chrysalis um, with my masking fluid. We will peel this off. I, I'm reluctant to do anything with the background after this. That's why I'm, I'm not going to bother here. But that's it's covered it up nicely. I mean, it's just done its job. Um, but yeah, okay, never mind. That was a bit of a, a pointless endeavour, but it's fine. It'll be okay. It has left the paper slightly discoloured underneath, which is quite interesting. It's got a slightly yellowish tinge to it. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Um, and as you can see, I'm having no problems taking this masking fluid off. So again, I'm going to take the colour off of the, the brush and just start at the bottom here. And keep adding water, basically. So the tiniest hint. Oh, yeah. See, that would have looked lovely with like a really soft blue background. Um, that was kind of what I was hoping for. You know, if we dim, I'll show you at the end. I say, like, I'm not particularly attached to this anyway. Um, I might just show you around that chrysalis. I could have had that as a standalone drawing, couldn't I? Might just do it. I might actually just cut the rest of that out. Maybe, maybe keep those leaves. That could be my straw. I actually like that idea. <laughs> like, I like it a lot. I, w I do want to try and get a really good gradient here. This is not quite dry enough yet. I might as well. I'm really unhappy with this as a whole. I'm unhappy with this too. So... I'm thinking to myself, I might as well just go for it. Let's see what happens when I lean a little bit harder here. Let's see if I can get a little bit more going on with this pencil. I maybe just have been a bit too, oh no. I was going to say maybe I've just been a bit too light handed, but that's not making much of a difference. Well, a little bit. So at this stage, I'm just messing about. But this is um this is one of the reasons why I'm really glad that with the scroller box, we get lots of sheets of paper. Um, I sometimes feel that with some of the other boxes, and scroller box themselves in the past, it's not something that they tend to do now, but if you've only got a couple of sheets of paper, you feel a bit kind of pressured sometimes or a bit hard-pressed or whatever. I mean, I, there's always like... um. There's always the pressure to perform for me in these videos. The fact that I'm just picking this up um, and kind of farting about with it. I'm, I never expect a full finished artwork. And I know loads of people that are great at spitting out whatever it is. Um, but this is a really good chance to experiment. And now that I've had a little play about with these supplies, I would actually start I would repaint this and I would just do this section here concentrate on that rather than having this full cycle my butterfly leaves a lot to be desired but what I wanted to use this for was um to get a really nice orange to yellow gradient because you guys know I love a gradient so I am going to fulfill that little fancy of mine self-fulfilling here um just for funsies uh, I I'm, I do not have time to do another one and post that, you know, all pretty on Instagram. Oh, look, here's my... I don't have time. But uh, having a good exploration with these pencils is really fun. This orange is a little bit on the offensive side. Oh, there I go. I don't really do insect. It's more, more mammals, namely quadrupeds. Uh, maybe I need to practice. Birds as well. I'm not very good at drawing birds. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting there with this, but I'm not really, if you know what I mean. Like, I feel like I have to work away with this pencil and actually build it up in pencil and not activate it with water. I can rub off my little dots here as well. Yeah, look. Okay, guys, there we have it. Oh, that was fun. Uh, just to satisfy my own, uh, my own delicate ego. <laughs> Sorry, butterfly. We need to work on butterfly sketching. Oh, wow. Right, okay. <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? <laughs> right, guys, there we go. I'm going to call it quits there. Uh, this is the first time in ages where I've, I've literally just like played around with the supplies um, and done silly things like this, but it was actually quite nice. As you can see, these pencils are a lot of fun. You can do a lot with them as well, if that's your thing. And they come in this uh, attractive little, very classy tin here. So as I said, I'll stick these in the stash shop. 
for anybody who would like to try them. They will obviously be in there at a reasonable price. So that is it for today, guys. I would love to hear your thoughts on this box. I've really enjoyed this box, although I didn't produce anything remotely like a decent artwork. That's okay. It was nice to see something like this. I've like, I feel like Strawler Box are on a really good streak just now. I'm letting the, the paper and fine liner thing from last month slide. Um, I'm not making a, a big deal about that. They are listening. They're tweaking things. And I think they've got a really good formula now. There will always be that aspect of some people will just not like what's in the box. Like when I get markers, I, I'm dealing with it though. And I think, you'll, I think you'll agree I'm doing quite well when I get the marker boxes just now. And you're always going to have that preference thing and you're never going to be able to please everyone. It's like me with videos. I can never keep everyone happy, but try my best. So I think that Scholar Box are on a really good streak just now and long may it continue. And I would happily, happily get another box like this again. Um, just because all the supplies are nice, they work well together. This paintbrush is held up pretty well as well. And I I could see myself having another go with this if I had time. And, uh, you know, maybe doing something a bit more complete, something a bit more solid. So that is it for today, guys. Please feel free to open your mouth and let your guts rumble down in the comments. And I'll see you back in the cave during the week for another colouring video when we go back to Colin Thompson's doors. And good news, I will have the new set of Ink Tense pencils to show you in that as well. So if you want to uh, watch me incorporate those new colours into Colin Thompson's doors and keep your eyes peeled for that and I'll see you then. Have a great day everyone and bye bye for now.